North Carolina lawmakers approved and Governor Roy Cooper signed a measure to guarantee summer school options for families worried about COVID-related learning loss. But what if the program faces a shortage of teachers? Dr. Terry Stoops explores that possibility in a new John Locke Foundation research brief. Terry is director of the Center for Effective Education. Terry, this is something we need to keep in mind. If there's going to be this special summer school program spelled out in House Bill 82, there need to be some teachers. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And we're talking about a a piece of legislation that passed that would mandate that school districts provide a six-week summer program to address learning loss produced by the pandemic. And at this point, we don't know how many students have signed up for the program. Uh, We know that in Charlotte-Mecklenburg, for example, uh, 22,000 have signed up. And we know that there, of course, are going to be thousands more across the state that are going to participate in this. But teachers don't have to teach during the summer if they don't want to. Uh, Most teachers have 10-month contracts, and that means that there is a space between mid-June and essentially uh, mid-August where teachers are able to engage in any number of different activities, leisure activities, uh, preparation for the next school year, uh, other types of summer employment. So there is a concern, and uh, some school board members in Wake County expressed the concern that of the 23,000 students they identified as qualifying and perhaps needing this summer session, uh, the survey that they sent out suggested that they won't have enough teachers to be able to fully staff a summer program with that 23,000. And I I fear that many other districts will encounter the same situation. I want to talk about some of the specific items in the research brief. One of them is something that uh, is an interesting note. The decision of educators to forego the potential to earn thousands of dollars in additional income this summer is a good reminder that not all North Carolina educators struggle to make ends meet. This is something we tend to hear when the discussion of teacher salaries comes up. A lot of teachers are struggling. If teachers are avoiding the chance to make all this extra money kind of fights that narrative. That's right. And and that's not to say this is a situation for all teachers. There are lots of teachers that have second jobs uh, during the school year, uh, during the summer. Uh, but it is a good reminder that not all teachers are in that position and that there are teachers that can enjoy the summer months going on vacations and taking treks with their family uh, that don't require th- uh, to supplement their income during the summer. And some of these teachers have the potentials to make several thousand dollars from, from this summer session. Uh, there's bonuses for teachers that have certain credentials or certain performance uh a re- re- certain records of performance, and districts are paying between forty and fifty dollars an hour for teachers, and and up to twenty dollars an hour for teacher assistants for the six week program. So there is the potential to make thousands of dollars. And if you look at the comments online, you could see a lot of teachers are jumping at the chance to be able to make thousands of dollars, but many others are choosing to do other things during the summer. And that really is a perk for being a teacher that you don't necessarily have to work during these summer months. You note that among the teachers who are uh, declining the opportunity to take part in this program, there are basically three categories of reasons, political, financial, and psychological. Yeah, we'll start with political. And and these are a a small contingent of teachers that believe that by not participating in the program, they're somehow sending a message to the General Assembly that they won't give in, uh, that they're they're a force to be reckoned with, and that they're going to object to anything that the General Assembly is trying to push on them. Now, uh, this is a really far-fetched reason for not participating in the summer program, but there are those that believe that by consenting to participating in the summer program that somehow they're endorsing the Republican-led General Assembly. Yeah, and then you also mentioned financial. I guess there are some who would be worse off by doing this than by doing their other other employment or, or taking this opportunity might 
close the door on something else that would be more financially rewarding. Yeah, there are teachers that recognize that the additional income, and they would be contract employees per per the legislation, uh, are going to be taxed. They don't want Uncle Sam to take more money uh, away from them. They fear the tax implications of this additional income. And so they have chosen to not work during the summer, uh, fearing that the amount of time and the pay that they would receive just isn't going to be worth it. Now, thank you, North Carolina Republicans, for lowering tax rates across the board for everyone so that teachers can take home more of their income. But... uh, I would be a little skeptical about uh, the Biden administration's uh, money grab uh, if it came to making thousands of dollars during the summer. Yeah, in fact, uh, there is one funny comment that you highlight in here that we have to mention. You you mentioned Uncle Sam. Uh, There is one person you identify as a financially savvy teacher who says, been there, taxes will get half. Trust me on that. The more you make, the more grabbing Uncle Sam gets. It's all day, too. And uh, I, I'm about to laugh because I have to stop or else the rest of it gets even funnier. Yeah. You also mentioned that there are some psychological reasons. Some people just, uh, are, after a year or so of COVID, just have to have a break. That's right. And that is probably the most common reason people are citing for their decision not to work this summer is that COVID and online education and all of the stresses that come with that have taken their toll. And so they want to actually take the summer to relax. They want to try to rejuvenate themselves. And, and being a former teacher and being married to a teacher, I certainly understand that. Um, And what I hope these teachers recognize is that this is a perk for being a teacher. This is a part of the benefits package that uh, teachers receive is the ability to rejuvenate during the summer, to relax, uh, to get your ducks in the row for the next school year. Uh, This is uh, something that not all of us have the opportunity to do, that we have to face the stress uh, all year long uh, and not uh, have the opportunity to take uh, six, seven, eight weeks off in the summer to be able to rejuvenate. So uh, I think we're going to start seeing a lot of teachers, especially as testing starts to come up here very soon, perhaps deciding that uh, they would rather take the summer to to try to collect themselves and to try to get their uh, self-care in line uh, before they uh, start the next school year and, and, and thus decline this opportunity to make thousands of dollars during the summer. At johnlock.org, the research brief carries this headline, Lack of Teachers May Threaten Learning Law Summer Program. Its author is Dr. Terry Stoops. He is the director of the Center for Effective Education at the John Locke Foundation. Thanks so much, Terry. Thank you.